now on you and them man it's not like it's not the same <laughs> anyway we're glad you could join us tonight i also see we have um evangelist bradley nooks sister magdalene agdoma uh we want to welcome you all to our bible study this evening all right god bless you and i pray that you have a wonderful time with us tonight as we study God's Word, all right? I'm just trying to set this up so I can see who we have on here, uh, all right? Yeah, Sister Thea Charles, good evening. Sister Diva Leon, Sister Delva, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we are studying the spiritual power of music in worship. The spiritual power of music in worship. So um, I pray that the Spirit of God will uh, enable us uh, to receive His Word and we will get a clear understanding of what the Bible is teaching us where music and worship is concerned. Okay, I want to just remind you that we'll be back on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock for our Sabbath morning service and of course on Sunday morning for our evangelistic service at 9 o'clock. Saturday is from 8 to 10 and Sundays from 9 to 10.30, all right? So we invite you to join us, invite a friend, so that we can all fellowship together, all right? Um, with that being said, we're going to get into the Word. We have a lot of information to share with you, so we want to start right now. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for taking us safely through the first three days of this week and bringing us to our homes where we could join on uh, virtually to this Bible study and participate in the study of your word. I pray, Lord, that you will grant us understanding and help us to incline our ear to what is being said and may permit our hearts and change our lives. Teach us how to worship in spirit, whether we are singing or we are praying or we are uh, listening to your word. Whatever we do, help us to do it in spirit so it can be acceptable by you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Clement Gabriel, good evening to you, ma'am. God bless you. All right. 
Um, so, we are studying the spiritual power of music in worship. I need you to understand that music, the sound, the beat, the rhythm, appeals to the senses, it appeals to the feelings of a person. However, the lyrics, the words, the ideas conveyed are supposed to appeal to the intellect and the heart. I want to repeat that. The sound of music, the beat, the rhythm appeals to one's senses, one's feelings, and they respond by moving to the beat. However, the lyrics, the lyrics, the words, the ideas conveyed by a song, the lyrics of a song, are supposed to appeal to your intellect and to your heart. All right? So now, the Bible tells us, Jesus speaking in John 6, 63, that the flesh profiteth nothing when it comes to salvation. Our feelings are not facts. They are fleeting. What you feel now, you're not going to feel 20 minutes from now or half an hour from now, depending on your circumstances. Sister Camelia Arthur, good evening, my dear. All right? So, it is important for us to understand that as the basis for the study tonight. Okay? What I have done is I've chosen five songs that we are going to listen to and then we're going to take a look at the lyrics. All right? Now, uh, these songs are played uh, differently. There are different um, arrangements and stuff. But I deliberately chose uh, the blandest, <laughs> the blandest, uh, 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 and simplest spiritual um, uh, beat for these songs, uh, so that we can we can focus on the lyrics, so that we can focus on the lyrics. All right. Um, so the first song is "And Can It Be," and as we go through this study, all right, we're going to listen to the song. We're going to go through the lyrics, and we're going to let the Bible help us uh, make the connection between the lyrics and what it says. Okay? We want us to understand the importance of spiritual power when we use music in worship. The first song that we are going to sing is And Can It Be? And Can It Be? Um, I think, no that's not where it is, it's going to be here. Yes. That's not where it is either. Let's go back here. I know I downloaded all the songs. Now I can't find them. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. I downloaded the songs. And now I can't find them. Okay, so we'll get it. All right. We'll get it. Uh, this is a setback that the enemy has orchestrated and uh, <laughs> we are not going to allow it to hold us back. Um, oh boy. It should be here. No, it's not. Okay, here it is. Got it. Alright, so this is the first song. I want you to pay attention to the words of the song because we're going to go through the words of the song and uh, marry to what the Bible teaches so we can understand the importance of the lyrics of a song in worship. Amazing love. Amazing love. 
of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy, all immense and free. Oh, my God, it found out me. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. The human nature is born in darkness and resides in darkness, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Then I diffused a quickening ray. I woke the dungeon flared with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. No condemnation now, I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Many people sing this song and never take time to meditate on the words. Good night, Sister Cheryl Sandiford. Blessings to you and Sister Cecilia Morrison. Blessings to you, both sister. Brother Michael, Norman Paul and Sister Mary Pierre Louis. Welcome guys, good to have you. Many times in churches we sing these songs but do we take time to meditate on the words and have the words minister to us? Do we understand what God is saying to us through the music, through the lyrics? Most times we move to the beat, we move to the sound, and we like the rhythm. But that's not going to save us. What God wants to get to is our intellect so that he can reach our heart. We can make a decision to surrender our hearts to him. And this work song here really is a song of repentance, a song acknowledging what Christ did for us and our response to it. So, we go to John 3, 16 and 17 for this song. John 3, 16 and 17. And the Bible says there, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So Jesus left heaven, came down to earth. We didn't come to God, God came to us. We went looking for God, God came looking for us. He sent his Son. He became one of us so he could save us all. So, it behooves us to regard his blood, the sacrifice that he made on our behalf and adopt uh, the, the, the abundant life, the, the consecrated life that he has died to provide us. All right? The next scripture that we are going to look at for this song is Ephesians chapter 2 and we are going to look from 5 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2. Alright. Ephesians is right before Philippians. Alright. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. And let's look at verses 5 to 9. And the Bible says there. Even when we were dead in sins hath Sorry, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. To quicken means to make alive. Alright? By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift from God, for God so loved the world that he gave. It's a gift. All right? And when you read, listen to the lyrics of this song, when you look at the lyrics of this song, you realize a gift that comes and quickens us back to life. All right? That's 
why we are called upon to gain an interest in the Savior's blood. It is His blood that cleanses us from sin. It is His blood that quickens us. We are dead in sins and trespasses. He resurrects us. The Bible says that He is the light. So, the third verse says, all right, that his eye diffused a quickening ray, a life-giving ray of light. I woke, I was resurrected. The dungeon flared with light. The light of Christ finally shone on me and brought me back to life and began to change me. You see? And so, you know, I, 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 I'm doing this because I want us to understand. Sister Angela Mahuketo, good night. Blessings to you. I want us to understand the importance of the lyrics. Don't just focus on the music when you're worshipping. In worship, our focus should be on the lyrics. What is being said to us in the words of the song? Is it ministered to our hearts and our intellect so that we can be closer drawn to God? Alright? And that's what these two scriptures are telling us. One more scripture I'm looking for here that I want to share with us on that. Uh, it says in the fourth stanza, Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Um, I think it is in Hebrews chapter 10. Um, verse 19, here it is. Having therefore, and Sister Thea, I didn't give you that one. <laughs> I didn't think about it until I sat here. Just forgive it to me. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So bold we can approach, approach the eternal throne, the most holy place, by the blood of Jesus. So you see why it is important for us to have an interest in the Savior's blood. It's going to transform us. It's going to change us. It's going to resurrect us from our deadness in sins and trespasses. And it's going to give us a consecrated life. One that enables us to come boldly to our Heavenly Father in every situation at any time. Okay? That's the first song. Let's go to the second song. The second song is Lead Me to Calvary. Lead Me to Calvary. Okay? Um, so we're going to go. No, that's not the song I want. Lead me to Calvary. Let's listen to the words. I want us to focus on the words. Our Bible study tonight is the spiritual power of music in worship.
Brethren, I say it all the time, and I'll continue to say it until I die. When you come to Bible study, when you come to service, walk with your Bible, walk with pen, walk with paper, write down the scriptures so that you can go back and study with the Holy Spirit so you can get confirmation. So you can get confirmation. All right? Um, so Mark chapter 14, 32. And they came to a place which was called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be so amazed, and to be very heavy, and said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch. And he went forth a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Sister Shallery, good night. Blessings to you and your husband. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not that I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping. And saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray. Lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I want to read also verse 44. Verse 44 of Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 verse 44. Luke Chapter 22, verse 44. Because each gospel has a different account. And I just want to pick up what Luke says about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Luke 22, 44. And it says there, And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down on the ground. And he arose up from his prayer, and was come to his disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he says unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest he enter into temptation. So we look at these words and we see here that it says, All right, may I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee, even thy cup of grief to share, thou hast borne all for me. We see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane being abandoned by his closest friends. We see Jesus with your sin, my sin, their sin, the sins of the world placed upon him. His, 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 his blood pressure rising. The stress that sin brings being placed upon him. And the veins in his forehead and in his neck becoming so pronounced that they rupture under the skin and he sweats blood. But no one, no one, no one supports him. No one encourages him. No one uh, is there with him to, 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 for a shoulder to cry on. He takes Peter, James, and John and they sleep. And Jesus had to carry it alone. My sins. And your sins. And that's what this song is ministering to us. You see, we, we, we realize that Jesus has left us to bear the stress and the high blood pressure that our sins have placed upon us. He says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So it doesn't matter what we go through. Jesus is with us. He could find nobody when he was carrying our sins to stand with him. That's what we must remember. Least we forget. Remember what I say to you all the time? The sinner, the human being on sin has a brain that has built in forgetters for what God has done for us, for righteousness. For what the word teaches. That's why God is repetitive. That is why this song is a clarion call for all of us Christians to remember Gethsemane. Remember his agony. Remember his love for us. 
Remember what happened at Calvary. All right? Good. It also talks about Mary. So let's go to John chapter 20, 11 to 18. What is the third verse talking about when it says, Let me like Mary, through the gloom, come with a gift to thee. Show to me now the empty tomb, lead me to Calvary. Let us see what the Bible says about that. Um, John chapter 20, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 20, 11 to 18. John chapter 20, verse 11 to 18. Okay. I'm all the way in Acts. John chapter 20, 11 to 18. And the Bible says there about Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood without the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and see two angels in white sitting, and one at the head and the other at the foot, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said unto a woman, Why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus, and when she had thus said, she returned her, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposed he to be him to be the gardener. Said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence. Tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken things, these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. The words of the song says, let me like Mary. If you sing in this song of miss and you're not focusing on the words, then you're going to miss the blessing that God wants to provide through this verse right here. Let me like Mary through the gloom come with a gift for thee. Jesus had been crucified. He was dead. First thing Sunday morning, Mary goes to the tomb with spices to embalm his body. It was her final gift to him. It was a misty morning, gloomy. And then the fact that he had been crucified added to her gloom, emotional gloom. So she comes, in spite of how she's feeling, to minister to her master one more time at a time when everybody else who had followed him were in hiding. The Bible just told us so. It says, then the same day, at evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples had assembled for fear of the Jews, they were afraid and they were in hiding. Mary didn't care to hide. She had staked her lot with Jesus and she didn't care what they were going to do to her. She was prepared to die for her Lord and Savior. She was not going to hide. All right? She comes and she sees an empty tomb. Then she comes out she turns around, she sees somebody who she thinks is the gardener. And she's not afraid to stake her lock with Jesus. She says, listen, where did you let my master? Tell me where you put him so I can go and take him. How she was going to take him, we don't know. She was going to find a way. That's the kind of, of, of what's the word I want to use? Commitment. This song is conveyed to us in that verse 
the commitment of Mary to Jesus. If we are to be true apostles, that kind of commitment must be for us. So when we sing these songs, we've got to focus on what the lyrics are saying. Because the lyrics, the words, the ideas conveyed must appeal to our intellect and our heart so change can take place. It is God ministering to us through music. Don't just focus on the beat. Don't just focus on the rhythm. Focus on the lyrics, the words. That's where true worship comes through. That's where true worship comes through. All right? The lyrics. The fourth verse says, May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee, even thy cup of grief to share, thou hast borne all for me. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 10 to 12. Matthew chapter 5, 10 to 12. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12. What does the Bible have to say about that verse? What does the Bible have to say about that verse? May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee, even thy cup of grief to share, thou hast borne all for me. This is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Blessed are ye when, sorry, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, hallelujah, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted them the prophets that were before you. And so did they persecute Christ also. So, we as ambassadors of Christ, as followers of Christ, are to share in his grief. And yes, sometimes we have to drink of that bitter cup. Alright? We must daily pick up our cross. Jesus tells us that. If you're going to follow me, you must deny yourself. Pick up that cross and follow him. Alright? And the last scripture on this one here, it says, King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Thine shall the glory be. All glory belongs to God, not to me. Don't come bigging me up because you think I sing a beautiful song or I preach a nice sermon or whatever, whatever. The glory begins, begins, belongs to God. It is His Spirit doing it in us. It is not us of ourselves. We are just vessels. You do not thank the glass for the water that quenched your thirst. You thank the person that gave you the glass of water. You see? What we do when we begin to put people on pedestals, Ben Snapper, Yogi, my brother, thanks for joining us, man. Good to, good to have you with us tonight, bro. Bless it. All right? When we thank people for a good sermon, when we thank people and praise them for singing beautifully, we thank in the glass for the water or the juice that was given to us in it. You thank the person. It is the Lord giving us through the vessel, the person. So, all glory belongs to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 29. Very short scripture. Very, very short scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 29. And it says, you know, I could quote it, but I want to read it. That no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh I'm flesh, you flesh, whoever preaching flesh, whoever singing is flesh. We are not to glory in God's presence. So when we participate in a spiritual exercise of worship and praise and adoration, we give God all the glory. And that's what this song is ministering to us. I thought I had something to do anyway. That's all. All right? So that's our second song. We are going to go to our third song. Live out thy life within me. Live out thy life within me. Live out thy life within me. Alright. Uh, let's get this on here. There you go. 
live out thy life within me. Here we go. Let's pay attention to the words. True worship is true to Jesus, King of Kings, be thou thyself the answer to all my questionings. Live out thy life within me, in all things have thy Transparent medium, thy glory to display. The temple has been yielded and purified of sin. Let thy shine glory now shine. From within, and all the earth keeps silent. The body has for me. Silent, gentle servant, moved only. Awaiting thy decision, which thou hast need of me, thou hast need of me. Live out thy life with me, oh, Jesus, King of Kings, oh, Jesus, King oh, of Kings, be thou the glorious hands. Submission to the Spirit of God 
to be used as God sees fit. Galatians 2.20 says, For I am crucified or mortified with Christ, nevertheless I live. I've been killed with Christ, but I'm alive. Yet it is not I living, but Christ living in me. And the life I now live in this flesh today, that you see, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me. You see? That's Galatians 2.20. So, the life that I live is Christ living in me. Live out thy life within me. Galatians 3.27 for says, For as many of you, as many of us, that have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So not only is Christ within us, but we are within Christ. So all people are supposed to see is Christ. Alright? So whatever we do should reflect Christ. That's how we live out. That's how his life is lived out in us. Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. And the Bible says there, Good night, Debbie. Thanks for joining us, honey. Blessings to you. Alright? Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. And it says, What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? So your body is a temple for God's Spirit to dwell in. For you are bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let him live his life in you and through you. When people look, they must see Christ high and lifted up in everything you do and say. Alright? Look at Romans 6.13. Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. 13. And the Bible says there, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. The Bible says, I mean, sorry, the song says, all right, its members that Body temples members, my hands, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my feet, the members of the body. Its members every moment held subject to thy call, ready to have you use them or not be used at all. That's what Paul is saying here. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Okay, so we see how these songs are, 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 are in tune for the Bible teaches. So when we worship in song, we, are, we need to focus on the lyrics. We need to focus on the words. The words are supposed to connect up here. So it could change us here. Alright, it's got to impact our intellect so that it could change our hearts. That's true worship. For they that worship God must worship God in spirit. Oh, it may have a nice beat. And nothing wrong in moving your feet to the beat. But while you move your feet to the beat, while you raise your hands and shake your head, make sure you are focused on what the words are ministering to your heart. That's where true worship takes place. You know, we studied worship on Sunday. I think it was we did study we did a study sermon on worship. All right? Uh, and uh, so, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing how God have us follow through with this study tonight. I didn't plan it, honestly, that's the Spirit is doing. All right? And um, the next scripture we have for that is Isaiah 6 verse 8. Because when you worship God and you are connected to God through worship by His Spirit, things begin to happen. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, Also I heard uh, the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, said me. We studied this on Sunday with Isaiah. We talk about worship. Isaiah had a vision of God high and lifted up. He's trained through the temple and he saw how the seraphims worship God continuously. 
with six wings. They cover their faces with two wings. They cover their feet with two wings. And with two wings they hover. And they kept saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And Isaiah saw the movement in the temple up there in heaven. The Bible says that the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And Isaiah recognized his nothingness. And he said, Woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips. I am undone and I'm hanging out with people of unclean lips. And then God dispatched a seraphim with a coal from the altar. It was placed on his lips and his sins and his iniquities were purged. Worship when Isaiah humbled himself and saw God for who he is and began to worship him as such. Things changed. So when God said, I need an apostle, I need a witness. I need an ambassador. I need somebody to go and tell. Isaiah responded, here am I. Sometimes I wonder if our lack of true worship makes it difficult for us to minister. Just thinking aloud. Just thinking aloud. I thought I threw it at me. I thought I threw it at me. You know? We are called to minister. Alright? And the last Scripture for this song is John 14, 27. John 14, 27. John 14, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. The 14th chapter of John. 14, 27. Yeah, 27. And the Bible says there, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give. Give eh? give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. But restful, calm, and pliant. From bend and bias free. That's peace. That's the peace that God grants to his followers. So nothing can stress them out. Nothing can cause them sleepless nights. When you are with God and you have his peace, permeating your heart and your mind, then you are restful, you're calm, you're pliant. Your only focus is what's God's decision for you. Here am I. What you want me to do, Lord? Send me. Live out your life within me. And be the glorious answer to every question I have. That's our third song. We've got two more to go. The next song the next song we have is um, Brightly Beams of Father's Mercy. Brightly Beams of Father's Mercy. Brightly Beams of Father's Mercy. Let's go to that real quick. Um, Brightly Beams of Father's Mercy. ago, noted preacher Dwight Moody told his congregation a story about a boat helplessly rocking and plunging on a stormy, starless night near the Cleveland Harbor. The mariners on board could see the lighthouse, but they needed to find their way through the narrow passage in the treacherous rocks that surrounded the harbor. Normally, a light on the shore, aligned with the lighthouse, marked the passage to safety. But on this night, the lower lights had gone out. Finally, the desperate captain decided they had no choice but to proceed into the harbor without the guidance of the lower lights. With a strong hand and a brave heart, but in almost total darkness, the old pilot turned the wheel. Tragically, he missed the channel, crashed the boat upon the rocks, and lost the lives of his sailors. Moody then explained the lesson to be learned from his story. The master will take care of the great lighthouse, but he depends on us to keep the lower lights burning. Philip Paul Bliss was directing the singing at the meeting that night and was so inspired by Moody's story that he wrote what would become one of his most popular hymns. 
brightly beams our Father's mercy. He also composed the music, a hymn tune known as Lower Lights, which was first published in 1871. The storms of life put many around us in peril. They may long to approach the light of our Father's mercy, but are unsure how to navigate the obstacles in their way. We all know how they feel, because each of us has been lost at sea from time to time. Most often, God uses us to rescue them. Amen. If we can keep the light of faith burning in our hearts, if we align our light with the light above, we can guide an exhausted mariner safely home. We can be the lower lights that send a gleam across the wave. Some poor, fainting, struggling seaman we may rescue, we may save.
Amen. <clears throat> so this song, words go, brightly beams our Father's mercy. Our Father's mercy. From the lighthouse evermore. But to us he gives the keeping of the lights upon the shore. Let the lower lights be burning. Send a gleam across the wave. Some of fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Dark the night of sin has settled. Loud the angry billows roar. Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Trim your feeble lamps, my brothers, my sisters. Some poor sailor, tempest tossed, trying hard to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. The Bible tells us in Malachi 4 2, Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. The word here for son is not S-O-N, it is S-U-N, to indicate that Jesus is the light. He is the lighthouse. He is the supreme lighthouse. Okay? So when the Bible says, brightly beams our Father's mercy from his lighthouse evermore, Jesus is the lighthouse. However, he has commissioned us to be his lower light. He has commissioned us. So turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. And let's look at 14 to 16. Matthew chapter 5. 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Alright? So, how do we trim our lamps? By studying the word. By living the word. How do we shine that light? Matthew 28, 19 and 20, and Acts 1 verse 8. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So our commission is to let our light shine. All right? And we let our light shine by living the word and by sharing the word. That's what the Bible teaches. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Turn with me there quickly. And then we have one more song. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And the Bible says, Jesus speaking, But you shall have power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the globe, of the world. What Jesus is saying applies to you and I today. He said, you're going to be my witnesses. In Brooklyn, in Manhattan and Queens, and the Bronx, in Westchester, and in in, 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 in New York State you know and then the whole country of the United States and then wherever I send you in the world that's what that means here we are to let our light shine that's what the Bible means when it says let your light so shine before men alright so that was our fourth song brightly beams our father's mercy our last song is it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Our final song. And I deliberately chose conservative music 
for these songs because I did not want us to get caught up in the music. I want us to focus on the lyrics. All right? So, um, this song, um, this song, it is well with my soul. Here goes. It is well with my soul. I did that, but we're going to go back and start it all over again. It is well with my soul. There we go. We're not going to have no uh, advertisements tonight. When peace like a river.
peace of Jesus Christ. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, I don't care what Satan throws at me, I don't care what life hits me with, you have taught me to say, it is well. I know in whom I believe. It is well with my soul. The Lord, sorry, my sin or the joy of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole nature of sin that has pervaded my being, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall become sight. What I hope for today, I shall see one day. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. And even so, it is well with my soul. That's the blessed assurance of knowing that you belong to God and you're saved in his kingdom. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1.9 1 John 1.9 We will see how this song how the Bible uh, uh, gives confirmation to this song. Acts, sorry, 1 John 1.9 Good night Brother Lester Nelson Thanks for joining us, Sister Brenda Good to have you my dear 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That brings peace. That brings peace. Now look at Matthew 9 verse 2. And we're going to bring it together for you to get it. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 2. Matthew, Mark. Matthew chapter 9. And let us go to verse 2. And the Bible says there, And behold, they brought to him a man sick with the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Alright? Be at peace. Thy sins be forgiven thee. So if we come to God, he's faithful and just to forgive us. They brought a man to Jesus whose sins had made him crippled. And God says, and Jesus says to him, your sins be forgiven you. Proverbs 24, 16 says, for the just man will fall seven times and get up. So, what this song is saying here, it doesn't say that you will not sin. It will say that as long as you walk after the spirit, you may stumble and fall, but you get up. You see? And then Romans 8, verse 1 says, for now, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Galatians 2.20, Galatians 3.27, who are walking after the Spirit, who are allowing God's Spirit to be their guide and stay. God's Spirit ministers to their Spirit, and they do exactly what He says. And so, um, there is no condemnation when they stumble and fall. Christ stands in their gap and says, Father, my blood, I took that sin to Calvary, because the song says, as the Bible teaches, all right, my sin, or oh, the joy of this glorious thought, when I think about the fact that my sin was nailed to the cross, not just some of it, but all of it, I can praise God and be at peace. And then it says, and Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. He's coming for me. He's coming for you. That's why we have peace. We are not uh, pil we are not, we are not, we're not citizens down here. We are pilgrims and strangers here. There is a land that is fair and day. And by faith we can see it afar. Jesus has promised, promised it to us. We believe his promise. We take him at his word. And so our faith will become sight. And what Jesus has promised us, we shall receive. John chapter 14, 1, 2, and 3. John chapter 14, 1, 2, and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, what a blessed assurance. What a wonderful promise. I trust Jesus. I take him at his word. I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to worship him in spirit. I'm going to focus on the words of the songs that I sing or that I listen to and have them minister to my intellect so they can transform my heart and allow Jesus Christ to reign there. One more thing I want to share about singing and worship. Acts chapter 16, our last scripture tonight. Acts chapter 16, 25 to 31. Acts chapter 16. When I was a young man, I sang in a quartet of the Castries SDA Church, and we sang that song. We used to sing that song. Paul and Silas in the jail of Philippi. They would not defeated be, but at midnight prayed and sang to God on high, and an earthquake set them free. Let's read Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And the Bible says in verse 25, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed, and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosened. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open. He drew his sword and would have killed himself. Supposing the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying. Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Brethren, two apostles of Jesus Christ, arrested, beaten, maligned, and locked up, shackles on their hands and feet as they are in the cell. But what do they do? It was well with their soul. And so, they praised God and they sang. It was not a concert that Paul and Silas was having for the other prisoners, although the prisoners heard them. But what the prisoners realized, it was their praises that caused the earthquake and the freedom that they all received. Worship through song, earnestly done, will provide blessings and freedoms from the effects of sin like we can never receive anywhere else. We have moved away from praising God through song to see him work miracles in our behalf. Oh, we pray and we fast, but we forget to sing praises. It is just as effective. It is just as powerful when we do it in the spirit. Allowing the words of the songs that we sing to permeate our hearts and our minds. So that we can be in tune with the Father. And the Father can be in tune with us. When that happens, there is nothing he wouldn't do for us. So I want to say to us tonight. The next time you sing in church, focus on what the words that you are singing are saying to you. And allow that to cause your spirit to rise. As you worship your heavenly Father in song. Yes, you can shake your head to the music. You can snap your fingers. You can raise your hand. You can move around a little. But that's not the most important thing. What is most important is that God is reaching you through the lyrics of the songs that you sing when you worship Him. May God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the study tonight. It was a little different. We had a little music in between. We thank you for that. We pray that we have gotten the message. Now may we move forward and worship you in song in spirit, so that you may receive our worship and we open the windows of heaven and pour blessings the Lord upon us. Be with each viewer, bless them, and keep them as they go through the rest of the week. And grant us a wonderful night's rest and wake us up refreshed and energized. Go about our daily duties tomorrow, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
Now we're going to play our theme song, our new theme song, and we are going to allow you to go home or go, go to bed or watch the Yankees beat the Red Sox. <laughs> if you're a baseball fan like I am. God bless you all. Good night. Give me the Bible song that is free to cheer the water alone and tell the stars. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance be me. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, Lord, love combine me. Till I shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken. When sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Jesus spoke, hold a face left to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, Lord, will combine till I shall vanish in eternal day. Good night. Good night, Sister Cecilia Morrison. Good night, Sister Brenda Sanders. Good night, Sister Mary Pierre Louis. Good night, Sister Marette Pierre Louis. Good night, Brother Lester Nelson. Good night, Sister Diva Luyon. Good night, Sister Camelia Arthur. Good night, Sister Anne Marie Florent Bill. Good night, Sister Madeline Agnewan. Good night, Sister Deborah Leanne. Good night, Dr. Benjamin Igwe. My former boss. Good night, sir. Good night, Sister Silo Shallery. Good night, my brother Benson Arthur down there in Atlanta, Georgia. Good night. Good night. Good night, Sister Angela Mahu Keto. Good night, brother Marvin Develd. Good night. Good night. Good night to you all. God bless you. May he keep you. May his face continually shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you and give you peace.